Hello everyone, thank you for having me and thank you for the introductions. I just only have 15 to 20 minutes, so I do hope my presentation will be clear enough for you. Today I'm going to share to you about research trend and future of nursing. Okay, let's go to the research trend. Well, basically when we talk about research trend, divided to be pre-COVID, during COVID and post COVID 19. Before we go further to the research topics, let me tell you about the publication time. If you may have experienced the first six months of the pandemic from December 2019, we need the information as soon as possible, including the journal editors, they can accept the article easily. They have fast track review, even maybe just only editorial review without the peer review process. Right? And for those lecturers, uh, researchers, they can easily to get funding support as well. But in the mid 2020 until 2021, we can see like too much information about COVID-19. Sometimes we feel bored reading about COVID-19. And even in the journal editors, they back to the normal review time because of too many articles. They don't want to publish the same articles because it's going to be redundant or set plagiarism or duplications. And today, most likely the published article talk about lessons learned or the evaluations of the two years of the pandemic, including strategy, system, or anything related to COVID-19. And most likely also related to the vaccination, recovery, and even new normal. So here, scientists are drowning in COVID-19 papers that I told you before mid 2020 right so this is on may that you can see like too many articles as uh, scholars we need to be able to validate the information in order to disseminate the information to the society as of 12 may from wso there are more than 500,000 articles from medline scopus web of science and other databases you can see like many articles well that's that's about the publication time here just a reflection from the current study in the journal of nursing scholarship and tier one journal so here current trends in nursing research across five locations in the united states south korea taiwan japan and hong kong you can see like there are six research trends research topics first related to demographic alterations is related to the the changing of the population most likely related to aging population so most of the papers of the research article right now they're most likely to prepare how to to deal with the aging populations what about the system what about the care delivery so anything related to that and the second one is about increasing diversities and globalization so it's about uh, cross-cultural research international collaboration right we can compare and contrast among cultures and the third one is about technology innovation well i can say this is the the, the important one technology is growing faster and the nursing informatics as well so that's why like the technology should be the future of nursing i will explain about the future of nursing later after this one and the fourth one is about individualized or personal care and population health initiatives is about self-care needs or care needs for the aging population is still related to the number one or palliative care for the cancer oncology care something like that and the fifth one is about the health policy and regulation of course and the last one is nursing workforce changes this article is published in 2020 2021 and then the data collection 2020 there is no research trend published yet in 2022 well um i'm still doing text mining but still not finished yet so i'm just giving you a bit description related to my previous article okay so if we can do the reflection from the system during the COVID-19, most likely we talk about the healthcare capacity, especially about the human resource. We have shortage of human resources. Here in the Sky News, 4,500 retired doctors and nurses sign up to battle COVID-19 pandemic. So every hospital recruit volunteers, new nurses, retired doctors and nurses. So what we can learn here actually is about the fast track process of the human resource management 
So in terms of the perspective from the human resource or nursing administration, what we can learn is that we can recruit new human resources faster. So that we can learn. So we don't need to wait until three months, six months, even years to get accepted from the job that we apply, right? So that's the first research trend that I can say. So what we can do right now to evaluate the human resource, right? And the second one is about shortage of PPE. So what we can learn from here that about the healthcare system capacity, care worker initiatives. You know, in some of the hospitals in Indonesia, based on my college experience, that they wear plastic bags to cover themselves because they don't have PPE in the hospital, not enough. So they can do that initiative, not even afraid of the virus. The third one is about physical exhaustion and mental stress. Well, because of the pandemic, everyone's stressful, yes, I can say, even fatigue. So many published articles during the pandemic, they talk about physical stress, fatigue, depression, even societal attempts, right? But in the new normal right now, I mean, after the two years of the pandemic, we can accept the, the condition with the pandemic. We can live with the pandemic. We can live with the COVID-19. But what we can learn, how the staffing system during the pandemic and then post the pandemic, so we can evaluate the, the, the system, compare and contrast in each hospital. So it's, it's a good one, right? And what about the coping strategies from from the doctors, from healthcare professionals, something like that. So we can we can learn. We don't know in the future we're gonna face this kind of uh, pandemic. So we already have kind of coping strategies, similar with the counseling strategies from the healthcare centers or from the hospital. How the managers, the first line is managers can take care of their human resource, especially nurses and and other stuff. And what about the reward system as well from the hospital? We need to be able to compare, to find which one is the most effective one for, for the reward system for for the nurses or the healthcare professional, right? And stigma and discrimination. Don't forget about this topic. It's important because during the pandemic, many nurses and medical doctors, especially in Indonesia, even they already save uh, people, society. They still being discriminated they got the stigma because they consider as a source of infections because of the misinformations and that's during pandemic but today is about the vaccinations many people reject to get vaccinated because of the information related to business oriented so a healthcare professional nurses medical doctors many societies think that they are a part of the business so that's why they are no longer considered to be the heroes but to be the evil so the way people think about something beyond the imagination that's what we can learn from from the situation we can we can do the evaluation in each phenomenon well if you can see from any phenomena research problem in the hospital settings we can just use the donabidian quality of care model we can see from the structures and process and outcomes from the structures we can see human resources problem material resources problem even organizational structure from the process we can see from the caring relationship or we can see from diagnosis or care delivery model and outcomes we can see from the health outcomes or patient population outcomes and here nursing theory and nursing practice still becomes a big gap between between them so we need to be able to bridge the gap and now we also have the problem between nursing research and nursing practice because now so many published article published research article but cannot be applied in nursing practice so nursing education and nursing practice should be able to bridge the gap we all responsible for this right? so that's from the healthcare system from the hospital or from the healthcare professional what about common problems in community all right, so here during the pandemic, the first year of the pandemic, of course, because we are being quarantined. So mental health problem related to quarantine is there. Stress, anxiety, frustration, boredom, depression, even societal attempts. But this topic are no longer new today because uh, many countries, when we go to uh, some countries, they do not require quarantine. So, but we can do uh, the, the comparisons, we can draw the conclusions especially to compare which one is the coping 
uh, effective coping mechanism strategies as a lesson learned to, to deal with the quarantine. We don't know what kind of the virus in the future that can treat us. Another topic is related to the cyberbullying. During the pandemic, even until today, we can see like many cyberbullying related to the those who were infected from COVID-19, even the family members. And even some say that this is the Chinese virus, Asian virus. So bullying and racism are still there. And then as a healthcare professional, we need to be able to address this kind of issue and then to provide the intervention how to deal with the cyberbullying, right? And paranoia related issue, yes, because of the COVID-19, people are acting like a surgeon, being more individualistic, and so many conspirational thinking everywhere. And then the problem after that is about the mistrust issues. Right now, it's quite difficult to bring back the community trust to the government, to the healthcare professionals, because of the inconsistency, because of the misinformation. So the new leadership is quite needed here. And then we can learn from each other, from each country. Complicated grip after the death of the beloved one. Yes, we cannot say just, oh, this is the last year, oh, the last two years, so many people die. We cannot just say that, but many people are still in the grief. They have complicated grief because the problem is when you got infected from coronavirus and then you just say goodbye at the time because you cannot visit them. When you got infected, you got isolated. So you stay alone and then if getting worse you have to go to ICU from the ICU if getting worse or probably you die is considered an independent risk factors of complicated grief right so we need to be able to deal with this kind of mental health problem and so it's kind of good uh, research if you can manage how to deal with the complicated grief right and economy related mental health problem yes from the first year but but I don't know maybe today is about recovery so people are getting their economy back step by step but again social support models are needed especially about the healthcare system or economical system so it's like two different sides but we can connect to each other all right so i can say here we need to see the problem in every element of the ecosystem intrapersonal interpersonal organization community and policy we can see from the socio-ecological model we can it's just just the example how we can see the problem to to, to, to get the research trend right okay so as a reflection we can see what kind of future of nursing from the COVID-19 pandemic here I say like nursing profession continues to evolve and progress at meteoric pace in the past that we can see even from the nurse uniform from the Florence Nightingale era so forth and then compare with the today so it's like quite different before it's like very traditional but today is quite modern and compare between male and female now so many male nurses as well and then of course many people even before the pandemic they try to make the robots to help to help nurses or healthcare professionals so they're still doing it because the era of robotic day and in the pandemic so technology is kind of a must skill that everyone needs to have right and here telemedicine telehealth telenursing virtual visit so it's quite common during pandemic because we cannot visit the hospital we cannot do the face-to-face -face. so they do the telemedicine they do tell nursing even triple care that you can see here to remotely connect with patients via camera bluetooth stethoscope digital stethoscope and technologies we don't know in the future what kind of you know technology that they they can they can have because many many way of thinking that we can do in the future and here the robots you can see like on the left in one of the hospital in thailand so it's quite it's quite scary seeing that the eyes should be like managed to be beautiful yeah because that's why I said so robot have a better look but another one is quite good we, we cannot reject this kind of future and here about the chip to monitor health yeah from the smartwatch is quite a lot and also here about the chip here that just put into the skin and some of the hospital can just control and then they can evaluate the condition of patients from the monitor from the chip yeah they still make it to be better about this and here for the nursing education we are now in the era of the metaverse because so many people now build the meta but in the nursing education they learn metaverse for clinical practice because in the reality they cannot 
touch the patients because they don't have license but in the metaverse they can do trials and errors so there is no problem to go and back to see the patient in the virtual reality when they check the body they can see like the whole part of the body inside it's quite good to learn today and also for those who like to have big data R and EHR in EHR electronic hair record we try to combine information databases between hospitals because in EMR sometimes it's just only for one hospital or one clinic and here uh, for the nursing educations the basic analysis using R and Python or SATA or any other data analytic programs or beta for all nurses in nursing education in order for us to become data fluent because right now in the era of data science so many data out there but in the education when we do the research the basic information we just use SPSS well I'm, I'm not saying like it's not good to use SPSS but it's much better if you can use R or Python or Stata to analyze the complicated data like the data from EHR the data from social media or any big data out there right so we, we cannot be stuck only in the SPSS. But yeah, the barriers, of course, is about the attitude toward technology, baby boomers, for example, computer skills and competences. But to be noted that with high technology today, it doesn't mean that we must be competent in technology. But rather, the role of technology is considered a supporting tool in blending traditional and innovative skills to show caring and competence. Minimally, nurses need to understand basic information technologies as leaders daily use laptops and mobile phones for work. This technological competency is gradually improving due to the faster movement of disruptive technologies today. And what about the nursing shortage, right? We still face a global shortage of nurses in the future as majority of nurses reaching their retirement age. And we will continue to recruit more men into nursing. And the future of traveling nurses continues to increase okay that's kind of the future of nursing and the last note nurses must be grounded in their discipline understanding philosophy in nursing is really needed which nurses step back from what they do to see what nursing is all about and to think critically about others opinion on the matter nursing has caring and a score in a way practicing loving kindness and equanimity authentic presence with the belief of others cultivation of individuals own spiritual practice toward wholeness of mind body spirit being the caring healing environment and being open to unexpected life events caring is dependent on where we are one's level of development the situation including consideration of patient's objective perspective and nurse objective perspective therefore although we are surrounded by technology and robotics in this disruptive era nurses with human caring with personal soft skills will not be replaced at all nurse educators should emphasize caring in any parts of the subjects in nursing curriculum and nurse leaders should continually promote caring caring relationship and caring moment in nursing practice thank you very much for your attention